Hi, I'm Emily Huber, Pioneer Field Agronomist here in West Central Illinois. Today, I want to discuss the potential for a frost event on our early planted crops. Here, it looks sunny and nice today, but the forecast for the end of the week has temperatures in the low 30s to even possibly into the high 20s. So when we look at the potential for a frost, what risk does it really pose for our crops that are in the ground and our crops that are out of the ground? So right now, it's a pretty low risk for our crops that are still underground. That ground temperature is going to, in the soil cover is going to help protect those crops that are in the ground and buffer some of that temperature. The plants that are emerged are at more risk. So as we look at corn versus soybeans, when we look at corn, the corn growing point stays below the ground until V5 or V6. We do not have any corn that is that far along in the territory today. So our corn that has just emerged, if it were to get a frost event on it, likely would come out of it okay. You might start to see some water soaked legions followed by some narcotic tissue uh, on those leaves that had emerged. We'll have to monitor those and make sure that it, the corn's not kind of wrapping up in itself. But aside from that, that corn crop should be okay. When we look at soybeans, soybean plants uh, are a little bit more of a risk because as soon as they pop out of the ground, their growing point is above the ground. So the soybeans that are just coming up, to so the ones that have their cotyledons out, to the ones that have unifoliates, the further along they get in that growing cycle, the further, the more at risk they are at. So our, our soybeans that are just kind of crusting through, breaking through the crust, breaking through the soil, those are, are most likely going to be uh, less damaged. And then as we get growing more, uh, those will be more at risk. So something that's good, kind of nice about soybeans in this sort of situation, if for instance, the main stem were to get injured, that main growing point, uh, there are two other growing points next to the cotyledons. So those could grow up and become one or two main stems and those soybean plants would be able to survive. So those are some things kind of about the each crops. Let's talk about the temperature. If this temperature of the frost stays in the 30s, we're gonna be at a lower risk than if the temperature drops to 28 degrees. If it gets below 28 degrees for three or more hours, that's when we can start to see uh, real detrimental and uh, death possibly to the crops. So 28 degrees is kind of that magic point where the crops can tolerate it or they can't. So we're, that's the number we're gonna be looking for. That's the number we're gonna be monitoring for. And then no matter what the temperature is, we have to wait at least five days to evaluate a frost risk. Frost risk. This is because we have to have time one for the symptoms of the frost to show. We have to be able to visually identify those. Then we have to wait for that crop to recover and grow. So we need to be able to evaluate which crops are able, which plants are able to recover from that and which are not. If we go out there earlier than five days, we're not gonna see a lot of growth. We're not gonna be able to tell which ones are gonna come out of it. It's just gonna require another look at the field. So wait five days. Patience is the name of the game for 2020. We had to be patient when we planted these crops early, waiting for them to come out of the ground, and now we gotta be patient now if we get a frost event this weekend. And then third, what areas of your field or what fields might be most at risk? We've got fields with high residue cover, fields with low organic matter, or fields with low lying areas. Those three areas of the fields or different types of fields might be more at risk than your other fields purely because of their buffering capacity from the cold temperatures or because of how the cold air likes to sink lower. So remember, 28 degrees is what we're looking out for to see and then also waiting five days before we go out and evaluate our crops. So in the event that we do have a frost event this weekend, I'll follow up next week with a video helping you identify what could be frost damage on your crops and if they're going to make it or not. That concludes this Pioneer Agronomy video podcast. Visit our page on pioneer.com and follow us on Twitter and Facebook for more agronomy insights.